Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. We're only a month into 2020 and while most of the world has barely had time to recover from its collective hangover, the developers behind the emulators for modern consoles have been hard at work. In the last month or so we've seen some major improvements in PS3, Xbox 360, Wii U, and Switch emulation, and there are no signs of things slowing down anytime soon. In fact, we've got a few more notable updates headed our way, and overall 2020 is looking like a great year for emulation. As tempting as it is to talk about what's in store for us down the road, I want to take a closer look at some of what we've already seen this year, just in case you missed any of it. Specifically, I want to focus on updates that have hit the free-to-play builds of these emulators, since that's what the average user will be playing on. Both Simu and Yuzu have had some huge improvements to their Patreon builds, and I recommend supporting any and all of these projects if you can. But the reality is that not everyone has the means to do so, and I don't want to hype up anything that isn't available for everyone in this video. If you are able to contribute and you'd like to give the developers a hand, you'll find links to the Patreon pages for all of these emulators below, as well as links to download them so you can try them out for yourself. While you're down there, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this, as well as tutorials and all sorts of other emulation related content from me. First off, let's take a look at an update to RPCS3 that we saw just over a week ago from the lead graphics developer KD11. This update involved rewriting some code for both the Vulkan and OpenGL backends in preparation for a future expansion that he's been working on. From this, we've seen some major improvements to Ratchet and Clank, Tools of Destruction, and Quest for Booty, the most noticeable of which is that upscaling works properly in these games now, so they can both be enjoyed in full 4K glory. Not only are they looking better, but both games are performing better as well because they no longer require right color buffers to be enabled to go in-game. Unfortunately, there's still some issues with collision detection in both games, so while they aren't playable just yet, this is a major step in that direction for sure. This isn't the only performance boost we've seen in RPCS3 recently. Right at the end of December, KD11 reworked how Z-Calling works to be more efficient in most games. The RPCS3 team made a great video on this update, so I recommend checking that out if you haven't already, but you can see some of the improvements in the footage I'm showing here. Along with this global improvement, a relaxed Z-Call Sync setting was added to the Advanced Settings tab. While this setting negatively impacts most games, a handful of titles will get a substantial bump in performance by enabling it. Metal Gear Solid 4 seems to be impacted the most, with performance doubling in some areas with this setting enabled. Red Dead Redemption also gets a fairly consistent bump of 10-20% to 20 depending on what's happening on screen. With this update, you can see that RPCS3 is catching up to Xenia in terms of how this game performs. Unfortunately, both of these games are still quite unstable, so they're not playable on this emulator just yet. We did get another tool to help with stability though. This month also saw the addition of a setting called Driver Wake Up Delay, which can increase the stability greatly in some games. One last update we got for RPCS3 came in the form of a patch that disables Morphological Anti-Aliasing, or MLAA, in a handful of games. This isn't a global speed hack, but it does allow for a decent bump in performance in some games that load MLAA in a particular way, although some of the affected games may see graphical issues with this patch enabled. You'll find a link in the description to a patch.yml file containing this patch, as well as several others that you may find useful. You'll also find a link to my video on patching games in RPCS3 if you have any questions about the process. Around the same time that we received the Z-Call update to RPCS3, we also received an update to Yuzu that increased compatibility, allowing us to run Mario Tennis, Crash Team Racing, and more on the emulator. This update also brought along some graphical fixes such as more shadows rendering correctly in a number of titles like the Pokemon games and Luigi's Mansion 3. A patch has also been created to remove the shadows from Mario Tennis, making it a much more enjoyable experience overall. Super Mario Odyssey also received a patch that removes all of the non-shader cache related stutter by removing the audio from the game. The developers have since figured out a way to remove the stutter while keeping the audio intact, so while I said I didn't want to focus on things that are in the Patreon builds only, we should expect to see this one hit the mainline version relatively soon. Unfortunately, the soft locks in Pokemon Sword and Shield have not been fixed quite yet, but that is something that's being worked on, so hopefully I'll be talking about that, the stutter in Mario Odyssey being fixed, and a couple of other really cool things that are currently in the early access build in a video in the near future. 
Now let's talk about Wii U emulation because we've seen quite a bit of progress there as well. We got the Vulkan backend and mainline releases halfway through December, so this year started with some optimizations for Vulkan, as well as fixes for some driver-related crashes in version 1.16. Just last week, version 1.17 was released, bringing even more Vulkan improvements and a ton of smaller bug fixes. This update also set the foundation for the new fifth version of graphics packs, as well as adding native support for game patching, meaning Simu Hook is no longer needed for running graphics packs. While it is still needed for things like motion control, this is a big step towards integrating all of the functions of the emulator into one single package. The Simu team has been doing a great job with their bi-weekly update schedule, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they merge into the master build at the beginning of next month. And last but not least, let's take a look at Xbox 360 emulation. We started out the year with a much welcomed update that brought us the ability to sign in multiple profiles in the Canary build of Xenia. You can choose whether to sign in offline or to spoof an Xbox Live connection to enable certain features within a game. Of course, there's still no online functionality for Xenia, but thanks to this update, local multiplayer is now functional in just about every game that's playable on this emulator. Most games will take a hit in performance when run in split screen, but I haven't experienced any unplayable frame rates yet. Of course, your mileage will vary based on your hardware. Signing into Xenia also fixes an issue in many games that require a signed-in profile in order to save your game, making them much more playable in general. The first master build of 2020 dropped a couple of days ago and includes a few bug fixes and optimizations. However, there is still an issue with Nvidia GPUs causing this emulator to crash. This issue is being worked on, but there's currently no ETA for a solution. Nonetheless, I'm definitely keeping an eye on Xenia this year. A couple of contributors have recently returned to the project, and it's been picking up a bit of momentum. The Canary build has seen some awesome changes in the last six months or so, from integrating the Unreal Engine workaround to allowing multiple profiles to be signed in. It's just a matter of time before we see some of these updates hit the master build, and I'm very eager to see what else we'll get to play around with in the Canary build. So that's a glimpse of what 2020 has brought us in the first month alone. Like I mentioned, it sounds like we've got quite a few updates to look forward to from these emulators and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to speed with all of the changes. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.